From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Last night, top Democratic presidential candidates went head-to-head -head on hot-button issues. Hear what some Arizonans thought about their performances. And a Valley woman heads to Washington to lobby for a bill that would extend anti-discrimination protections to transgender individuals in the workplace. And businesses across the Valley are getting in the Halloween spirit. And One Haunted House is letting you fight back. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News. I'm Yahira Hawkes. And I'm Jake Gaden. Thanks for joining us. Poised and polished, that's how many debate watchers described Hillary Clinton's performance in last night's first Democratic presidential debate. But the former Secretary of State isn't the only one claiming victory today. Reporter Ivan Rodriguez breaks down some of the key issues to emerge from the contest. The five candidates on stage touched on a wide range of topics. Despite the lively discussion, one local expert says no one was able to erode Hillary Clinton's position as frontrunner. Less than 24 hours after the Democratic presidential debate, both Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are claiming victory. One issue the former Secretary of State was unable to avoid, the so-called email scandal. But one ASU political scientist doesn't believe that's going to have a lasting impact when it comes to getting the Democratic nomination. The email scandal, in quote marks, is not a scandal at all. It has virtually nothing to do with national security, and it's a tactic being used by her opponents in the Republican Party to try to reduce her popularity in the country. Another topic brought to the forefront by moderator Anderson Cooper, gun control. Each of the four candidates addressed the issue, but Simon says most views fell within party lines, except one. Senator Sanders, coming from a uh, state in which a great part of the population has firearms, been a rural and a hunting state, has taken a more uh, nuanced position over time, although he still supports a ban on assault weapons and background checks when it comes to people with criminal records or people who have mental problems. The youth vote was important to President Barack Obama's victories, and once again, many younger voters are keeping a close eye on the Democratic candidates. I guess if anybody, I, I would consider Sanders, but I still probably wouldn't vote for him. I would vote for Hillary Clinton just to see what having a female president would be like just to see her perspective on things, her views on what it takes to run a nation. Many experts say the biggest loser following last night's debate may actually be Vice President Joe Biden, because after Hillary Clinton's strong performance, there may be less support to have Biden enter the race. Ivan Rodriguez, Cronkite News. The Democratic presidential debate covered several controversial topics, including, including the Black Lives Matter movement. Presidential candidate Martin O'Malley touched on this point, stating that the movement is shedding light on a serious point and that the nation has undervalued the lives of people of color. O'Malley said our nation needs to address these points. Black Lives Matter, and we have a lot of work to do to reform our criminal justice system and to address race relations in our country. Former chairman of the Arizona Republican Party, Randy Pullen, took out to Twitter during the debate saying, yes, black lives matter. The best way to end the slaughter of young black men is to take guns away from blacks as they are the main killers. Gun control continues to be a hot debate topic. Last night's debate had answers ranging from Hillary Clinton saying it's time for the entire country to stand up against the NRA to Bernie Williams saying Bernie Sanders saying our job is to bring people together around around strong common sense gun legislation. Gun control policy is not a new debate. The Carnegie Night News 21 project housed at the Cronkite School did a full in-depth investigation into gun culture in America. For a full report, go to gunwars.news21.com. As we head into a presidential election year, there's concern about the age of voting machines. But as Cronkite News reporter Aaron Johnson found, county election directors are ahead of the game, gathering their own funds to ensure the equipment is up to date. It's a new age of machines, voting machines. But a study released by the Brennan Center discovered state and local election equipment in 43 states had exceeded or are close to passing their lifespan of 10 years. Arizona is one of 14 states to have equipment more than 15 years old. The equipment for the most part has been fairly durable. Um, we've had it in service, like I said, we've had the AccuVote units in service since 2004. We've had very few problems. 
Back in 2002, Congress passed the Help America Vote Act and gave each state sufficient funds to improve elections with new procedures, databases, and equipment. But the money is gone, and the machines are beginning to show signs of age. We had, a, in the 2014 election, our server um, began to show signs of indicated trouble. It collapsed on us, it, probably just from, you know, um, old age or just the finicky nature of, of computer uh, machinery. Even yeah. though the HAVA money yeah, is gone, really most Arizona counties have already purchased or are planning to purchase new equipment in the next year. I think our county elections officials are the gold standard for, uh, quite frankly, the country. Arizona has a long-standing uh, reputation as a state that really gets out in front of election equipment. And both Roberts and Mariskill say these upgraded machines are even more accurate at counting votes. In Phoenix, Aaron Johnson, Cronkite News. According to experts, voting machines undergo logic and accuracy testing before each election. Nine counties plan to replace their older machines ahead of the 2016 election. An Arizona State Trooper risked his life stopping a wrong way truck driving northbound on a southbound side of I-17. And he did it with great personal sacrifice. Reporter Wafa Shahid spoke with him about the experience and how he's recovering. I took the initiative to what we call lawful intervention and, and uh, lined up headlight to headlight and, and ran right into him on purpose. State troopers patrol the roads looking for hazards. Last August, Trooper Jeremy Barr spotted a wrong-way driver going northbound on the southbound I-17. He was uh, impaired by alcohol, uh, and uh, at the hospital he was uh, treated and released. But Barr's injuries were more serious. He was hospitalized with a fractured L4 vertebrae and seven bulging discs. Still doing a lot of therapy and treatments and seeing doctors and that. Uh, it's, it's, it's too far away to start looking at stuff, we're just taking it one day at a time. But even though his hospital bills are covered by workman's comp, he still has a family to support. Barr's best friend has started a fundraising campaign on GiveForward.com. Just in four days, just with word of mouth, we've been able to raise $4,000. Um, and hopefully with this, we can uh, increase it and help it and help his family even more. He's my brother. Um, he would do it for me. Uh, we are best friends. and. Uh, I owe it to him and his family. Barr says wrong way driving is a growing threat to people not only in Arizona, but also nationwide. Call 911 if you've witnessed any signs of wrong way driving. Tomorrow is Latino HIV and AIDS Awareness Day. Coming up on Cronkite News. Find out which clinic is offering free testing here in Phoenix. And the number of Latina business owners has tripled in Arizona in just the past eight years. See how these businesses are growing. Hi, I'm Paula Kirker, president of PBS, and I'd like to personally thank you if you've made a contribution to 8 Arizona PBS. You know, when you fund your favorite shows on this station, you're ensuring great television continues to be available for yourself, your family, and everyone in your community. One of the easiest ways to do that is by making a monthly contribution on an ongoing basis, what we call sustaining membership. When you call, tell us how much you'd like to donate each month. Our current sustainers tell us that 10, 15, or $20 a month is best for them, but you decide what works for you. After you've made that call, we will deduct that amount each month from your credit card or your bank account, and we will continue until you tell us otherwise. Your membership will always remain current, and renewal notices will become a thing of the past. Best of all, your ongoing support means that the best television on television will continue to come your way every single day of the year. So please, consider a sustaining contribution today. Thank you for your support of this PBS station. Tap into the art scene from coast to coast. Join the Artbeat Nation a weekly series where you'll experience a rich cultural tapestry of art stories from across America. Meet artists, writers, composers, and performers setting the pulse of the arts in America now. Join us for a brand new episode of Art Beat Nation, Sunday at 5 on 8HD. An Arizona transgender woman traveled to Washington, D.C. to share her story with lawmakers. Cronkite News reporter Adriana Barajas spoke to the woman who hopes that her message brings more protections to the LGBT community. I just hid. I guess you'd call it being in the closet. And that's how I lived my life until just four years ago. 
for Bobby Lancaster coming out as a transgender woman was not easy personally or professionally. I ran headlong into a lost job because they could not support me in watching me change from Dr. Bob on the job to Dr. Bobby. They wanted no part of it. The constant reminder that she was tired as a male led her to quit her position as medical director for Hospice of the Valley. It hurt because I was doing such wonderful work for them. It was some of the best work I've ever done in my life. That hurt is what brought Lancaster to Washington, along with Shayla Clafcorn during the National LGBT Lobby Day to make sure that more congressional members support LGBT rights. We're here today talking about the Equality Act in particular, a bill that would extend uh, protections for LGBT people. If passed, H.R. 3185 would amend the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and include protections for those based on sexual orientation and gender identity in the workforce as well as in public housing. So this is just a, an issue of fundamental fairness that we all should be protected whether we're a woman or a person of color or a gay person or a transgender person. Lancaster says there's still work to be done but she hopes that her story changes hearts and minds so that no one else goes through what she went through. There's still a lot of individuals like me who um, have faced discrimination and continue to face discrimination just because we're LGBT. In Washington, D.C., Adriana Barajas, Cronkite News. We reached out to Hospice of the Valley today. Officials there said they would get back to us to comment on this issue. The number of Hispanic entrepreneurs is on the rise, and women are leading the way in starting their own business. Cronkite News reporter Jennifer Souls introduces us to one of the young women building her own business. According to a recent study done by the Arizona Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, our state has about 89,000 Hispanic-owned businesses, and over half of those are owned by women. For sure, for sure, let me know so that I can push that out, because that'll be big. Carla Chavarria owns Phoenix-based YCM Marketing, a business born out of her love for art and storytelling. I draw stuff, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I, um, Anything that you see, like on billboards, on uh, magazine covers, um, posters, anything that you see is a lot of the stuff that we do. The number of Latinas like Chavarria who have started a business has tripled in Arizona in the past eight years. There are now 66,000 Latina-owned businesses. There's a kind of, um, if you will, a, a, an analogy to be drawn between what's happening now with Hispanic-owned businesses that are owned by, by Hispanic women uh, and the kind of Rosie the Riveter phenomenon that happened in World War II. Some credit immigrants for helping drive that economic growth. And rather than saying, I have skills and nobody wants to hire me, they basically said, I'm going to make my own way. I'm going to find a way uh, to, to contribute to this uh, community and also um, pursue my own dreams. Chavarria created her business out of necessity. I'm a dreamer, so meaning like I didn't have document, the proper documents when I was, when I was here. Um, so it was very hard for me to work. So she went to work building her own company. You just kind of have to do it and, and enjoy the process. I think that's, uh, that's the key of it, to enjoy it. You know, those late nights, early mornings. Um, you have to learn how to love it and enjoy it because otherwise you're not. It's going to be the worst thing you do in your life. And that's the kind of drive that has translated into success for thousands of Latina entrepreneurs in Arizona. Since starting her business in 2012, Chavarria has seen business do so well that YCM Marketing is currently moving to a bigger location. In the Broadcast Center, Jennifer Souls, Cronkite News. According to the CDC, HIV still remains a growing concern and health risk for the Hispanic community. In honor of tomorrow's National Latino AIDS Awareness Day, Cronkite News reporter Lauren Michaels spoke to health experts in regards to the importance of HIV testing. Here in Arizona, more than 16,000 people are living with HIV. Hispanics make up about 26% of that number. This year, health experts and HIV advocates are hoping to put an end to this increasing number by encouraging everyone to get tested. Yes, I'm ready. Kate Kleckel found out 10 years ago that he is HIV positive. Now through the Aunt Rita Foundation, he tries to educate everyone he can. Prevention is the cure. so. Um, I decided to dedicate my life to preventing it in others. If it was too late for me, it's certainly not too late for anybody else. But in order to prevent the spread of the virus, testing is key. 
It's very important for HIV patients to know their status and get tested and get on medications as soon as possible. One local clinic here in Phoenix offers free testing, and one employee who's a part of the Latino community strongly urges everyone to have the HIV conversation. Most important things that we can do for the community at large is to educate our children and to continue to put this at the forefront of uh, our Hispanic uh, population. Um, because we are um, more vulnerable. Tomorrow there will be free HIV testing at two Walgreens locations off 19th Avenue and Bethany Home Road as well as 35th Avenue and Southern. It doesn't matter if you're here legally or not legally, if you're an immigrant, where you're from, uh, all you have to do is show up at our Walgreens and we will test you. If we could test every Arizona and get every HIV positive person in care and keep them in care, the chances that they transmit the disease to someone else drop by 96%. And for any reason, if you can't make it to the free HIV testing tomorrow, you can also visit a Theranos Wellness Center at any time to receive information and testing services. In the Broadcast Center, Lauren Michaels, Cronkite News. Some Valley students are turning a park into a future community. Coming, on, coming up on Cronkite News, find out how one group has them building green homes and rebuilding their lives at the same time. Also, find out how not sorting recycling is increasing your costs. Tap into the art scene from coast to coast. Join the Artbeat Nation, a weekly series where you'll experience a rich cultural tapestry of art stories from across America. Meet artists, writers, composers, and performers setting the pulse of the arts in America now. Join us for a brand new episode of Art Beat Nation, Sunday at 5 on 8HD. I'm an urban gardener. I'm a PhD student in criminology and law and society. I have an expertise in construction history. I also happen to be a swing dancer. Oh, and I'm a source. And I really like being a source. Great journalism requires great sources, and we want you to be one of them. Arizona PBS is building a network of viewers, people with insight into the stories we cover and the stories we should cover. Explore what it means to be a source for the Arizona PBS Public Insight Network at azpbs.org slash pin. Three green homes are being built in the Valley for low-income families. These homes are being built by students and volunteers who are part of a program called Youth Build. Cronkite News reporter Kendall Bartley visited the park they turned into a construction site today. These students were struggling before becoming involved in the program called Youth Build. Now they're getting hands-on training in construction as well as earning their GED and giving back to their community. The young person comes in having been brought up to believe that they're not going to succeed. Maybe nobody in their family has finished high school. Maybe nobody in their family has really held steady work for a while. And they're now the first one in their family who's gone on to high school or gone on to college. The, they become the leaders in their family and community. 100 Prudential Financial employees and 50 Youth Build students volunteered their time today. Sawing, lining up and hammering wood beams to build the exterior and interior walls of these three homes. Youth Build helps former drug addicts like Aaron Ubali, who has decided to roll up his sleeves and get the job done to create a better life for himself and his family. Youth Build's a really good program and I recommend anybody who like is looking for, you know, a way out after, you know, not being able to go back to high school, you know, ask and you shall receive and this is a really good program. Youth Build and Prudential have also paired with Habitat for Humanity and the Department of Labor to fund this project. In Phoenix, Kendall Bartley, Cronkite News. These low-income homes will be moved to a community in Avondale. We live in a world where our resources are limited, so we result to recycling. But the industry is facing challenges. Cronkite News reporter Alicia Leonage tells us how improved recycling habits can help the environment and the economy. According to the federal government, the U.S. recyclable rate has stalled at 34 percent since 2010. Meanwhile, bales of recyclable materials continue to lose value, all because of our own bad habits. Sorting, sifting and separating. 
About 350 tons of waste materials venture through a series of conveyors and are organized into piles at the waste management recycling facility in Surprise. The end product resulting in stacks of bottles, paper, cans and other recyclable materials. But that's not all these workers discover. Plant manager Jose Herrera comes across things like animals, electronics and more. Items that might no longer be wanted but aren't recyclable either. Even though they are sorted by machines and by hand, some still sneak by. They really compromise our, our processing, either by jamming some of the equipment, causing damage to the equipment, like ripping belts, uh, broken equipment, or basically even as, as dangerous as fires. And Herrera says when the unwanted items get through, the value of the recyclable bundles declines, but taking extra time to sort comes with its own cost. By slowing down the system, um, it creates additional recycling costs. Some of these items don't even belong in this bin. But this one item could contaminate an entire load of recycling. It increased costs which end up being passed along to our customers. Yet Cogborn says one of the ways to prevent this is to make sure that you know what's acceptable in your recycling program and that you're putting the right materials into your bin. There are three basic points to remember when recycling. First, recycle cans, cardboard, plastic bottles and paper. Second, keep our recyclables clean and dry. Do not include liquids and food. And third, either reuse those plastic grocery bags or return them to the stores. In the Media Center, Alicia Leonard, Cronkite News. Businesses across the valley are cashing in on Halloween. Coming up on Cronkite News. We take a look at behind the scenes and see how one valley business has turned the tables on a traditional haunted house. Fridays, it's at Cronkite News, your social sharing connection where you choose the news. Facebook likes and shares, tweets, retweets, and favorites. YouTube views and subscriptions. We're watching you watch us. From our digital home at cronkitenews.azpbs.org to your television, web browser, or mobile device. Find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Then join us for at Cronkite News, our weekly refresh, each Friday at 5 on Arizona PBS. Tickets are available now for one of the most anticipated luncheon events of the year. Join industry leaders from the worlds of media, politics, business, and education as we honor award-winning news anchor and late-night host Charlie Rose, this year's recipient of the Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism. The event takes place at the Phoenix Downtown Sheraton on Monday, October 19th at 1130 a.m. For tickets, visit azpbs.org forward slash rose or call 602-496-4539. Hi, I'm Judy Woodruff, co-anchor of the PBS NewsHour. Preparing the next generation of journalists has never been more important than it is now. With its groundbreaking partnership with Arizona PBS, the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at ASU is revolutionizing journalism education to provide students with a real opportunity to work and learn under the supervision of veteran journalists, producers, directors and editors on newscasts, investigative stories, and documentary productions. The Cronkite School and Arizona PBS, reinventing journalism education in the digital age. Americans are expected to spend $4.9 billion on Halloween this year. Costume shops, candy makers, and haunted houses will compete to get their piece of the pie. Cronkite News reporter Steve Dent found a local business that's using the undead to bring in customers. Who is the enemy? The infected undead. Four nights a week, Scarizona's Chris Prendergast takes customers on a wild ride acting as Corporal Robinson. Now, I don't know what you think you know, what you might have heard, but zombies are real. They've taken over this part of the valley. Our mission this evening is to seek out and destroy the enemy. Light them up, light them up! Operation Zombie Storm is underway as we get closer to Halloween. Customers get to shoot 200 rounds of paintballs at live zombies. Arizona aims their business model at millennials, knowing the National Retail Association expects 82% of people ages 18 to 34 will celebrate Halloween this year. We want them to have fun, and that's the age group now that's really into the haunted house. Haunted houses are coming back into vogue. It's fun for people to be able to go to them now. 
Haley Pleasant visited as a group bonding experience for employees working at Mad Dog Saloon. I thought it was really fun. I liked that it was really big and they had all the different little scenes and stuff. So I thought it was really fun. As for Prendergast, he never once broke character. You just might make it out this situation alive. In Mesa, Steve Dent, Cronkite News. After the season ends, Scarezona gets together with the other haunted houses in the valley to plan for next year. They want to make sure their businesses are spread out and that each haunted house is a little different. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's next on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. Coming up after Cronkite News, it's Arizona Horizon. We'll hear about a new report that looks at the state's future in a variety of ways. And we'll visit with the author of an extraordinary and inspirational book about life's challenges and rewards. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. Our series, Congo's Hope, concludes with a look at the gorillas in Barunga National Park. That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.easypbs.org.